So, day seven. We're going to hit functions pretty hard. And, well, as hard as you can hit it in an hour for a topic that could take a couple weeks. Uh, then we'll look at logs. So just as a reminder, if they ask you to evaluate a function, like say f of negative 2, when f of x is 3x squared minus 2x plus 1, all we're doing here is plugging in negative 2 everywhere we see an x. And we're going to use parentheses because... Uh, we don't want that minus sign to look like subtraction. Oop, minus two. Let's see, that's negative two squared is four. Minus two times minus two is four plus one. We've got 12 plus four is 16 plus one is 17. That's blurry. There you go. Then we could do the same thing, but maybe say, let's do it for like a piecewise function. So as a reminder, piecewise functions have different uh, values or different equations depending on what domain we're looking at. So we do like 3x minus 7 if x is greater than or equal to 0, and uh, 4 plus 7x if x is less than 0. And so now when we check f of negative 4, we're only looking at, we got to find out which one it applies to. So this is saying x equals negative 4 x equals negative 4 is in that function, or that part of the piecewise function. So f of negative 4 will be 4 plus 7 times negative 4. 4 minus 28 is negative 24. Some of these are quick and simple. A lot of this beginning stuff is quick and simple. We don't have to just stick numbers in. We can stick in other algebraic expressions. Let's uh, do g of 2x minus 1 when g of x equals 2x squared minus 3x. So when we do that, we're replacing this x and that x with that. And remember, this is 2x minus 1 times 2x minus 1. I'll write out this one right now since we're doing some operations here. We've got 4x squared minus, minus 2x and minus 2x is minus 4x. Negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. We distribute. Okay. 
And finally, we group together like terms, and we'll be done. 8x squared minus 14x plus 5. <laughs> wow, where did you get the water balloon? Oh, he found it from the mess hall. Mess hall has it. You know what to do. In a room full of laptops, this is not a good decision. I don't want to play catch. Why does it got bubbles in it? What makes you think I want this up here? I know, let's go set a water balloon on top of an electrical device. This seems like a smart operation. Alright, does anyone need this out longer? Okay. Uh, something fun uh, in algebra that is important, very, very important in calculus, is the difference quotient. The difference quotient is f of x plus h minus f of x over h. That is the difference quotient. So let's apply the difference quotient to the following. Boy, the difference quotient is very, very, very important. And then we'll look at what happens when h is zero. Man, who cares? Well, if we look at it right now, this whole thing would just be zero. Yeah. No, no, it's zero over zero. Oh, boom! <laughs> if we tried to do that right now, we would have f of x minus f of x over zero. Zero over zero, boom, headshot. But we're not going to apply it there. We're going to apply it after we apply this to a function. So let's say f of x. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, any it's often used in video games, but any like war shoot someone in the head. That's right. You're an embarrassment to computer science majors. It's not my fault you don't play video games. So if we do the difference quotient here, x plus h, we're just going to replace this with x plus h. So we've got 2 times x plus h minus 2x, the original function, over h. So let's clean it up. So when h equals zero, this doesn't change. Why don't you guys take a second and apply the difference quotient to this one? You guys give it a try, see what you get. If this does not come up next week for you in Calc 1, it's coming up the following week for you. This is an early thing that you're going to be using in Calc 1. Chapter two, though. Is it? Yeah. Ah. Well, it's 
It's early enough. No, this is. I thought it was chapter two because it's like chapter one is just pulling limits and then later on. Uh, they apply the limits to this. Yeah, it might be chapter two. You might be waiting three, four weeks. Yeah, they really beat on limits for a, a good while. Well, if you're in my class, you'll be seeing it in the next couple weeks. I at least reference it while I'm teaching limits as like, this is where we're going. Hi! Come in, Tracy. For those of you that are new, this is Miss Red, Miss Tracy Red. She is a math instructor here. She's a badass. She teaches the higher math courses, so end game stuff. Like, Doing the, the training for SI on the SI coordinator. Good thing to go to when you're in your classes. You have an SI in there. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, if your class has an SI, you want to attend SI uh, training stuff. Well, sessions. Huh? Right? I really wanted an SI for my Calc 1 class out in Tulare, but like getting someone in Tulare is not easy. But I got my, my, my minion to do Calc 2 this semester. You have minions? I have a minion. Ainsley. Yeah. You've met Ainsley, haven't you? She, she's shown up to FNL a couple times. No, well, you weren't here much last semester, though. Some of us had better things to do than visit with students. <laughs> All right, let's see. I'll see. Uh, I'll see if you guys tried it. What we're doing, this is our difference quotient here. So this is f of x plus h minus f of x over h. We have this. And we want to simplify this, clean this up. We've got, this will be 3 times x squared plus 2hx plus h squared minus 3x squared over h. And so we got 3x squared plus 6hx plus 3h squared minus 3x squared over h. And the x squareds go away. They cancel each other out. And we're left with 6hx plus 3h squared over h. Now, you may not recognize it immediately, but the H's will cancel, but we want to do it smart. Let's factor an H out of what's on top. And then we can cancel H's. And we're left with 6X plus 3H. If H equals 0, this turns into 6X. <laughs> This idea is related to the heart and soul of calculus. So I'm going to give you one more, and then we're going to look at a little pattern that happens. So when we had f of x equal 2x, we the difference quotient led to it equaling 2. And when we had f of x equal 3x squared, the difference quotient led to 6x after h was 0. Give f of x equals 5x cubed to try. Thank 
No, it's chapter one. It's an entire chapter. I mean, the idea, you can go do the idea of a limit pretty quickly graphically, but we do a lot, like cover. My buddy, we always have that argument. Which one? Limits are part of pre-calculus. Should we go anywhere or that? Oh, my I don't see why we shouldn't. Thing. It is an algebra-based thing. It's in thing. the book. It's in the book. It's like but the it's last not chapter. in our... It depends on the book. Yeah. It's so not in our... Calculus. Does it? Does it? Mm -hmm. Is it really one of the new limits? But everyone skips those. Right. You're going to do a whole lot in calculus on it, anyways. Are you ready for Berkeley, Carlos? Yeah. Is it next week? No, I'm going to be this Saturday. I mean, but school starts next week? No. No. I'm going here. Oh, you got some time. Nice. Yeah, I'm just like If you're not sure how I did this quickly, if we have time later on, I'll do it. But this is Pascal, part of Pascal's triangle. I think there's an E on it. And we apply it with the binomial theorem. I did. A plus B in the end. X plus HQ. That big mess, and you just know that? I just said where it's part of I use the binomial theorem and Pascal's triangle and we'll we can hit this again later after we've covered logarithms and stuff. And I would just like multiply that all out by hand. You can. This is you can multiply it all out by hand, but like in interest of saving paper and time. I give them time to write it out so they if you wrote out x plus h cubed and multiplied it all out, you should get this when you Wouldn't it just be easier to say like x cubed plus h cubed? It would, but it would be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> easier doesn't mean right. And you'll see something similar happens. Our f of x at the end cancels out with a term in the beginning. And we have something that only has h's left. Well, we've got x's in it too, but like there's everything has an h. And again, we can factor out an h.
And when we cancel out the H, our difference quotient here is 15x squared. And then the terms that are going to go away when we set it to zero are these. These go to zero. When H goes to zero. So I'm going to line this up up here. And I'll say our difference quotient, put it up here. This led to 15x squared. There is a pattern. This is something you will learn. It's one of the first derivatives you will learn in calculus. It's in chapter two. When we do this different quotient, and as we have h head to zero, as you'll see when we talk about limits for a long time, we bring the power down and lower the power by one. So this was x to the first. We lower it down to x to the zero. Bring the power down and multiply it and drop the power by one. 6x goes down to one. The x cubed goes down to x squared. The three multiplies by the 15, we get 15x squared. This is a simple pattern you're going to follow. It's one of the big first derivatives you're going to learn. There, yeah, you learned some shortcut to calculus today. Anyone need this other one? Uh, I see some pins going still. Oh, wait. Composite functions next. Did you go to high school in this town? I did not. I grew up in Sacramento. I actually moved to the Fresno region to get out of uh, living in a world of drugs. Yeah, I used to do a lot of drugs when I was teenager and in my early 20s and I'm like, I get away from the environment, go somewhere, I don't know anybody. I had friends in Fresno that were clean and moved down to Fresno and met my wife online on Match.com. She lived in Porterville and so when we got married, we bought a house in Slary halfway between both of our jobs and found COS. Your origin story. My origin story. How I avoided becoming a villain. The jail or COS? What's better? Oh, I never got in trouble. <laughs> oh. <laughs> the drugs I did, no one would ever suspect the fat guy of doing. Don't do drugs, it's bad. Don't get No, no, I, I'm going to go with don't do drugs. Like, my wife has had brain cancer. She's had an eighth of her, her brain removed. And yet, her short-term memory is better than mine. She'll remember lots of shit, but I'm like, I don't know where this is. She's my reminder for a lot of stuff. Like, so, I probably could have taken over the world by now had I not done drugs. But maybe it is better for the world in the long run. You guys ready? All right, maybe not.
a glorious overlord, a just and glorious overlord, that would be great. All right, composite functions. This is an indicator of how lazy mathematicians are. Our good old f of g of x. This, remember, this is short for plugging g of x into f of x. In fact, have we saved any notation here? Have we? No. We still have the f, we still have the g, we have two sets of parentheses, and we have an x. Doing this notation actually added an o. It made it longer. But in general, it doesn't. So let's take a look at some, some examples. If we have f of x is, let's go with 2x plus 1, and g of x is 3x squared minus 4. Let's take a look at f of g of x, and then we'll do g of f of x. We'll do the first one together. Uh, we're going to stick G into F. So everywhere there's an X, we're going to replace it with G of X, which is 3X squared minus 4. We distribute. And we get fog X, or F of G of X is 6x squared minus 7. Wasn't that fun? Sometimes they have fog of like negative 2. Yeah, we'll, we'll look at evaluating it in a second. I do like to golf. It's a lot. It's expensive though. Last time I golfed, I hurt my back. <laughs> when I started college, when I was like 18, I attended for like four weeks and dropped out. The golf? I, well, I did college in general, but I had it. There was a golf course and I was enrolled in it. I could not fucking. I couldn't hit that little ball. I couldn't hit it. I, not with the proper stroke. I could not swing the glove right. <laughs> well, yeah, I might as well close my eyes. Right. Well, I hurt my back, so I missed it. I'm like, I should do a sport, do something. This is sporty and doesn't have me running all over the place. Nah, couldn't do it. I was better at tennis. There was a really good game though. Off the tennis. Football. Football. Sports and math don't mix. That's not true. That's not true. And you could, if you have English, you could, if you know how to do math in your head and calculate stuff. Think about the physics that go on in math and in sports. No, but usually on the geometry and billiards, the coaches and oh. the math teachers. I'm sure billiards being a sport is questionable. Definitely a sport. It's a sport. You think so? Yeah. It's like calling chess a sport. No, it's like calling table tennis a sport, which it is, because it's in the Olympics. <laughs> yeah, table tennis, uh, yeah, I would argue is a sport. Sooner than I would argue billiards is a sport. If I put on the same... I guess it does require physical... Bowling and table tennis and pool, cornhole. I guess if it's something physical, there is physical... Bar games, but, you know. Cornholing. <laughs> So here we're sticking, what we're doing is 3 f of x squared minus 4. So this will be 3 times 2x plus 1 squared minus 4. And we want to, I'm going to write, expand that out. 
We have 4x squared plus 4x plus 1. And so Goff of x is 12x squared plus 12x. We have plus 3 and minus 4. This gets down to minus 1. Now we can see it's important to note f of g of x does not equal g of f of x. Not always. <laughs> not always. There are circumstances, but in general. You're right. In fact, there is a circumstance where very much should equal each other. It's very important too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Except for a special exception, which we're hitting in a second. Inverse what? Inverse, Inverse function, yeah. So, like, if we were given f of g of negative 2 real quick. There's two approaches you can take to doing this. You can do g of negative 2 and then plug that value into f. Or write out or calculate f of g of x like we did here and then plug in negative two. So if I did that up here, I have six times negative two squared minus seven. This is six times four minus seven is 17. Alternatively, the other way would be doing g of negative 2. g of negative 2 is 3 times negative 2 squared minus 4, which is 3 times 4 minus 4. 12 minus 4 is 8. And then doing f of 8 equals 2 times 8 plus 1. 16 plus 1 is 17. You get the same thing no matter which way you do it. If you only need one of them, it's usually quicker to just do this way. No. But if you're going to calculate more than one, you're better off like determining what the composite function is first. Oh, Let's talk about inverse functions. But a couple people are still writing. I will so be I patient. Do you see that the, the one where it was like showing, like, you know, negative, like this? And like, I was thinking of the hypotenuse being like, the hypotenuse. Does anyone need this up longer? Okay. So let's look at inverse functions or finding an inverse function. Let's do finding an inverse function first. We generally write it like this. The negative one is not an exponent. It indicates inverse. And I don't have a good answer for why they didn't just use capital I. It seems like to me you could just do like capital I or some other symbol rather than something that has it, uh, like something with the negative one elevated, looks like an exponent. 
Why they did it this way, I don't know. I bet Mr. Red knows. We'll ask him when he's not helping the students. He, he loves math history. It's important to him. So how do we find one? Let's say we start with f of x equals 5x plus 4. Just a quick reminder of the steps. Swap f of x for y. Then exchange x's for y and y's for x's. Step three, solve for the new y. And four, replace y with f inverse x. It still looks blurry to me. Is it my eyes? I'm going to hit auto function or auto tune again. Mr. Ren, do you know why we use negative one for inverse rather than like a capital I? Which seems more intuitive. It's much more easier. Because it's related to one over, but in some weird way. It's not 100 percent I don't want to say it's related to one over because then it sounds like one don't over. Say that, yes. <laughs> That's it's stupid. inverse. But the origin story of the negative one, it's totally unfortunate. <laughs> no teach. I think it's because of that. I don't know if it's going to be. So we're going to replace y with, or f of x with y. Then I am going to replace all my y's with x's and all my x's with y's. And then we will solve for y. Subtract 4. Then divide by 5. And we get y equals one fifth x minus four fifths, and that equals f inverse of x. Maybe when we invent time travel, we can go back to the first time that person used that notation. We can say, "Don't do it." But if we do, if we do do that, something else. If we do do that, we would have never learned it like this, and would be back to I already. So it means we're not. Someone's we not can't, doing that. Can't use I, so you might want to use all or something. Why can't we use capital I? Oh, well, maybe capital I. I understand lowercase I is out, but. Or I would like to go back in time and like probably like Renee Descartes or something. Don't do it. Yeah, if we, change, yeah. if we change the history of the timeline, we'd be here doing it right. Right. So it tells happen. you that never happens. It also tells us that we never need time. We never need a time machine. Unless time is, is always linear, meaning if you affect the past, it still affects the future. But so the future is lagging behind us. It's just going to be a little different. Yeah, it's just, it's just like, <laughs> if you affect the past, is the future, and the future is continuing. It's the past. He's already the past. If you <laughs> haven't read The Time Machine by H.G. Wells, it is not a long story. It really isn't. But it's really good. It makes you think about some shit. Can, can you reference that book? I think I was supposed to read it in high school and then, like, cheated on the report. You cheated? How? I don't know, like the cliff notes? I think I chat GPT in my book report in 1987. So I never read the book. <laughs> the only way a time machine would ever be effective at accomplishing something is if the time machine is never used by its creator. Because whatever the machine was created for cannot be changed, or then the time machine would never come into existence and you have a uh, a paradox. That's the word I was looking for. 
You go the other direction, yeah. We can go in the future. I don't know about coming back, but yeah. Well, the time machine would allow it, but like, that's not how time travel works. I get physics. From Take me. physics three if you want to learn about time travel. Physics Fact. Three? Have you taken physics three yet, Carlos? Yeah. You guys do time travel, right? No. <laughs> Isn't time dilation time travel in one direction? I guess. Yeah. It's one directional time travel. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Okay. So, so we have f inverse of x is one fifth x minus four fifth. We had f of x equals five x plus four. Why don't you guys try, let's do a composite function with each. Why don't you take f of x and put f inverse in it? Why? Because I told you to. There's a lesson here is why. That's why. Then, so like take that, like this is like doing f, f, let's call this g of x. We're doing fog x. I don't want to see what I did wrong. I, I, I misread the three as an eight. You've got this whole, I don't know what an inner monologue is, don't you? Misread the three and an eight is a three. I don't, I don't mess you up. So what happens when you do that? You get it wrong. No, this, not his singular problem. Yeah. Oh God, what are you doing? Change F inverse with a G? Just to make it clear, we're doing a composite function. <clears throat> like I call it G of X up here. What happens when we stick F inverse into F? We had five X plus four. We're sticking in uh, one fifth X minus four fifths. And then we had plus four. So I distribute, I've got 5x minus 4 plus, not 5x, just x minus 4 plus 4, and I get x. That's kind of interesting. Why don't we take a look at doing it the other way around? Let's stick f into f inverse. So we've got 1 fifth. 5x minus, or plus 4, <clears throat> minus 4 fifths. This is x plus 4 fifths, minus 4 fifths, equals x. So when I said, in general, f of g of x does not equal g of f of x, but there's a, a, an exception, these are the exceptions. If f of g of x equals g of f of x, g equals x, f and g are inverse functions. And what's so what's so cool about inverse functions, Mr. Red? And why do we like that? They undo each other's operations. That's one super fun fact. Fun facts about inverses. They undo each other's operations. What happens with the domain of f of x? It becomes the range of the inverse. Holy shit, what? That's like... The domain of f of x? Best. They don't even know what the domain is. Oh, yes, they do. We've covered domain. The domain of the inverse. Becomes the range of f inverse. They're thinking shit on this. And vice versa. <laughs> And the range of f of x becomes the domain of f inverse. 
Is that possible? What? How did he get through high school and not learn a lick of math? What did I do now wrong? You didn't like it. Pay attention in high school. What? But now you gotta like. So what does this mean in general? I see what you're wrong with an idiot. The graphs of the two. This is a this is a huge one. The gra and they're related to the very concept of that that at domain range. The graphs of the two functions. Are symmetric across. The y equals x line. Okay. Let's take a look. Let's use let's use a log function and then, right? Sounds good, right? Let's say uh, y equals two to the x, and we got log base two of x. I do an x y chart here real quick. Negative one zero one. If I stick in negative one, I got two to the negative one, which is one half. If I stick in zero, I get one. Here I stick in two. One half one two. I was gonna start with the y's, but you're right. <laughs> Log two of one half is negative one. Log two of one is zero, and log two of two is one. So when we graph these, And maybe if you do another one, it might help help make part of it a little bit clearer. We got two, four. So the next one, it's it starts to skyrocket up. So this is y equals two to the x. And if I plot the other one. It's actually a graph of awesomeness versus time. So the x-axis is awesome. I mean, the x-axis is time at COS. The y-axis is awesome. And so the more you stay at COS, the more awesome you get. Yeah. <laughs> I was here a really long time. Oh, I guess that maybe I'm wrong. Wow, what the, <laughs> damn. That's cold, Mr. Redden. He talks like that, but he trusts me to teach you computer science. He said it was okay. So make your point, is it, where's the symmetry? I'm getting there, I'm letting him sketch it. Don't rush, there's, there's magic and patience. <clears throat> so as Mr. T back there was telling us, if we do y equals x, Oh, I should label this one. The symmetry is like we go directly across and it's equal distance across it. And it's every point we do is going to go equally distant across it and make right angles. This makes like a mirror. The one is a reflection of the other. Right. So, related to the whole domain and range, this is easier to see that these are inverse functions, first off. And if we know the, the x and y values for one of them, 
we can plot the other just by swapping the X and Y columns. Negative one, one half becomes one half negative one. Zero, one becomes one zero. One, two becomes two, one. Does that make sense? If you really stop and incorporate this, like think about why, this kind of feels like magic when you first hear it, right? Why does it happen? When we found the inverse, we did this. We change X and Y. So like it does, it makes sense that the X and Y switch. It's exactly what I was going for. This is related to how we find it in, found inverses. We swapped X and Y. If you remember that bit about inverses and stuff like that, it makes the entire like process of finding inverses so easy to remember. You're just switching two letters. And solving for them, and it makes sense why everything mirrors, everything does this. So, do you ever use those AI image generators where you can generate an image like Mid Journey? I've made stickers for my laptop. So, you generated images? Yes. So, the way the generation works, generative AI is nothing more than an inverse. That's how it works. It's very simple. An inverse of what? A neural net. So you have yeah, facial recognition, right? On your mm -hmm. phone. So you put a picture into your phone, right? And then it comes back as a prediction, like a you. Right? That's how it works. Mm -hmm. Now, what if, so that works. It's Why do I have a third leg, Mr. Red? Convolutional oh. neural net. <laughs> so if you want to generate a picture of Mr. Jones, you type in David, it goes backwards through the neural net, and it generates a picture of oh, That's Mr. just Jones. like the idea of an inverse. It Look is exactly that. an inverse. So Mid Journey, Dolly 3, all those image generations are simple inverses. That easy. But I guarantee the things I typed in to get my sticker, no one had ever typed in and had an image for. So that's another thing. So they're so, doing a composite of them. So when you use a neural net, it's basically a compression to, let's say, 2D space. So when you train it, you get all the pictures of Mr. Jones, you get all the pictures of me. So this would be John, right? This would be David, and then you get pictures of you are going to land there, and so you get these clusters. But when you train, you can only train on a finite number of, of pictures. So that leaves all these other points, you know, undefined. But you could still take one of those undefined points and run it backwards through the neural net and get a picture. So you don't know what you're going to get. From the points that are close to, to to Mr. Jones, but you'll get some sort of morph between these two clusters, and it will look like a, a morph between me and you. So yeah. Oh my God! This is, Don't ever say those words again. This is dense, so not all points will. Jones red and composite. Oh my gosh! Uh, like the fly? Oh no! So it's a domain issue. So on, on generative AI, you don't have to have the same domain. I, I'm gonna. I hate to break this to you, because uh, if we have something happen where we like get compressed into one, it's already been determined. I'm like a planet where I dominate my area of influence, and you're so gonna you're like get, a black hole. You're gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be the fly. And you're gonna be the the, the overridden. <laughs> into your event horizon, I'm gone. 
You'll be you'll be toast, and eventually it'll just be David with a couple red traits. Did that make you feel better? I knew you went to the new AI because I've seen this from Ben, and you've talked about it before. I knew where this was going. I wanted you to have an out where you can talk to the students about AI a little bit, give them a break from math. These no, it is. The generative AI stuff is a simple inverse. Did it make you feel good? Did it, did it took me a long time to figure that out. I thought it was magic. When you type something in, you get a picture. Yeah. That's freaking magic. It is magic. It is not magic. It is it's magic. magic. <laughs> I'm going to argue it's magic because how does generative AI work? How does the machine computer work? How does electricity passing through metal do this? Well, that's magic. I mean, that's, that's magic. Physics. Right, Carlos? What? How does your phone work? How does electricity charging that phone make it so you can talk to people across the world, play video games, look up porn? How does it let you do all these things? How does electricity going through metal do this? That's magic. Yeah. I, it's just kind of weird. It's magic. Now, I guess if you go deep, well, you, not I guess, I know if you go deep enough into the computer hardware, learning about how that shit works and the creation of processing chips and all that good shit, you'll learn the magic. But to me, it's still electricity passing through metal and I can fucking play Dark Souls. That's magic. Right? I can't explain it. Most people on this, 99.99% .99 of the people on this planet cannot explain the technology they use. Therefore, it's magic. It is coding. Shit. No. Why does coding work? Why does electricity passing through metal allow you to code? It's magic. Again, I understand how computers work. I don't understand why they work. I understand how, but not why. We are literally taking metal, small, thin pieces of metal, passing electricity through it, and by doing on-off switches and creating pulses with electricity, we are able to play video games and do cool shit like generative AI. That's deep, that's magic. Never lose the wonder of the world. It's cool shit. You take that phone back a hundred years, any phone, fuck, a flip phone without internet, well, even if you had internet capability a hundred years ago, it wouldn't mean anything, right? You take a flip phone back a hundred years, just take a picture of somebody with it and show you, they'd hang you. You would be set on fire for being a witch. <laughs> if you had a phone, a hundred fifty, took a phone back in time 150 years ago, They'd set your ass on fire. They'd accuse you of being a witch. That's witchcraft. No there's no internet. It wouldn't work. Well, the internet wouldn't work, but you could take pictures and stuff. Oh, well, then that's just using your app without actually using the internet. If you have the, 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 the app downloaded, so you, you don't need the juice. internet. Of course, yeah. But that doesn't matter. You're dead by that time. They've already <laughs> strapped your ass to a bonfire and did the whole House of Dragons on your ass. With my phone in the car, and I had like phone anxiety. That's real. Have you had your phone overheat in the car where it fucking it shut down? That's hot. Because it was so hot in the car? That's deep. It happens. I'm trying to give you guys a little break. Does anyone need another break to like a little bit longer break to stretch your legs or the bathroom? What's for lunch? All the oh, yes. <laughs> so like one cracker. <laughs> It's 10.30. That's why he left five minutes ago. He didn't go get his phone. He was checking for lunch. You want to have fun with Mr. Redden? Take a class with him that starts at about 11 o'clock. He will just talk about lunch the whole goddamn time. He is very much, he's like Sheldon Cooper. He's a creature of habit. He has to, I bet his bowel movements are at a specific time every day. He's got that shit in his day planner. <laughs> that is it, right? <laughs> yes. 
I make a joke about that, but if you knew exact time of day you'd be going to the bathroom every day, you could plan your day around it. You could make sure you're in the comfort of your own home. No one likes using someone else's bathroom. Unless you're one of those assholes that pisses on the seat. Don't be an asshole and piss on the seat. Lift the seat. If you guys want another inverse one to do while you're waiting for the next section, give this one a gander. Why well, you gotta do it like that? Now, a lot of the math classes are two hour blocks. This is a good training session for you. Get used to doing two hours of math. Not every class, some of them are Monday through Thursday, one hour a day, but a lot of them are two hour blocks. It can never hurt if after like 50 minutes or so, like when it hits the next hour hand, if you gotta go to the bathroom just and the teacher isn't stopping to say, let's take a break, raise your hand and say, can we take a quick bathroom break? It's been an hour. No teacher's gonna yell at you or be upset. And if you're taking Mr. Red, just say, hey, Mr. Red, discuss tacos versus enchiladas for 10 minutes. I'm going to be right back. <laughs> just give, give us Italian food versus Mexican food versus Chinese food. Pros and cons. Go. You would think if you looked at me and Red standing side by side, the person that would bring up food first would not be him. Given 100 people guessing, they would all say me. And yet it's red every time. Because they don't think. I clearly can miss a meal. Mr. Red is not overweight. Mr. Red is like, I'm ready for my meal. Is that what you're doing? AKA oh, Why are you doing intermittent fasting? Are you literally doing intermittent fasting for like a reason? So I'm too cheap to buy new clothes. So, so how long is your intermittent fast? I'm trying not to eat. The, the idea of intermittent fasting, for those that don't know, is like you starve yourself for like twelve to sixteen hours, and then you just fucking like binge eat for eight hours. And it makes you real hungry. All I can think about. Well, is but that you is only eat for a little while, but then. I thought intermittent fasting was like where you just have breakfast and then you have just a small lunch and then at night straight away. That's not fasting if you're eating four or three times a day, four hours apart. But like you don't eat any snacks or anything in between. It's, it's still so not fat if it's. That's then that's a regular day. Breakfast, <laughs> lunch, and dinner is a regular day. A regular day is where you're just like eating, you don't care what time. No, that's American eating. Nah, that's, that's obese thinking. That's, that's yeah. Is breakfast, lunch, and dinner a regular day, or is that intermittent fasting to you, Dr. O? Breakfast, lunch, dinner. Yeah. There's no evening snacks, no coffee in between, no, no coffee, breakfast, no, no levity. No, so you're not a hobby. <laughs> no biscuits here, there, no nothing. There's just water between the three. No, that's not yeah, fasting. No. The very word fasting means not eating. No, but what do you say is like after breakfast, like dinner? What do you say? No. Not everyone has a snack every couple hours. I hate to break this to you, and it's not called fasting. No, but like I've seen. You that is some American that. shit right there. That is some first world country thinking right there. Fasting. <laughs> A four hour gap is not intermittent fasting. That's the time between normal meals for the average person. You're just maintaining your 
Yeah. Right. Like, intermittent fasting is you fast for a while every day. Yeah, usually, like intermittent fasting is like sixteen hours, sixteen to eight. Or right. Whatever. It's like you do, long, you don't, you eat every day, but you have a long gap in there where you're not eating, where you're giving your body time to just burn excess yeah, fat. It's supposed to be like what is it, like a negative calorie deficit or something. Yeah. Does it look like I might have ever thought about weight loss things? No, 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 I'm not saying that. I might have some I idea what I'm some, talking about. I've just seen some YouTube videos and what I think. So it's because it's on YouTube, it's all correct? Yeah. I didn't say that. <laughs> well, I'm just saying. I was like, getting angry. I was getting angry. I just tried to shut it down. Your knowledge is correct. Right? He also, we, he likes, he just likes to argue. Remember the whole? Oh, the BMW. The yeah. BMW thing. And then, yeah. Of course they do. Oh, my bad. My apologies. I don't know why you're going cheap at Mercedes. Let's go and just get a Lambo and call it done. No? That's not your BE. That's my BE. I want a Lambo. A black Lambo. That's hot. Didn't Shaq get like a modified sports car because he's so tall? I bet he did. It wouldn't surprise me. All right, you guys have had enough of a break. If you try this, did anyone try this? No. Try this. This is inverse on hard mode. Tell me when you get stuck. It's funny, like. He's like so tall, and his obsession is cars. And they're like, you know, not between. You know I mean? Rich people like cars. Rich males like cars. Because they can afford more than one. And a chick magnet. In fact, Mr. Redden, Dr. O was there when I was identified as potentially being a planet. So was his daughter. When we were, at, we were doing it at NASA, when we went down to the JPO, we did that whole, what, what, what defines a planet? They dominate their area of influence. We were discussing if me and him did a composite inverse function and what would be the outcome of me and Red being put together. And I said I would be, it would select a fly and I would take over. So, you can't be a planet? They, they should identify you as a planet? Uh, you, uh, do you remember that? Okay, yeah. Yeah, the, the picture of Elizabeth standing in front of where it said Jet Propulsion Lab, but I had her stand so that she walked part of the laboratory and it says lab rat. So she's like, you can't say lab rat. No kidding. Was it deliberate? Yeah. Okay. Oh, what it be? Would it be? It would be. All right. Oh, fuck. Now what? Look, what is your name? Luhani. Luhani? Okay. I remember that. Because you're the one that always is answering questions. You're going to be like a rock star here. You're going to be a teacher's favorite. What they call pet, but it's a good thing. You're not, you're, you're like, teachers like students that answer questions in class. We're not just sitting here asking the question for our own benefit. We're trying to promote thinking and help you guys help each other and stuff like that. And when nobody answers the questions, it's like, you guys haven't seen Ferris Bueller's Day Off, probably not, but it's like Bueller, 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 anyone? If you haven't seen Ferris Bueller's Day Off, that's a good movie to watch. Should watch it. What, what, what's the story of the name of the movie? I'm so free, I don't think I have written nothing to do. Might as well watch it.
Now what? Factor out the y. Okay, why would I do that? Because we're solving for y. Because we're solving for y. We can do this, right? So we got our y by itself. Look at that. Y is by itself. So now we give it f inverse. <laughs> All right, logs. You guys ready for them? I think you have the log table in here that you should memorize. You just took a big risk right now, you know? So what's the blue? What? The water room just like went on the down. You lucky it didn't Oh shit. It's fine. Okay. I'm lucky. Brendan's lucky. It's his jackass behavior. I did not bring a water balloon into this room. Right? Be all messy. Yeah. I'm sure you have it in here, but we'll write down the list real quick. Okay, right now. Okay. Let's take a look at our list of uh, rules for logs. So logarithmic functions. Y equals log B of X. That is called the base. Argument and y equals log b of x is interchangeable with b becomes the base for the exponent. This is our exponent, y becomes the exponent, and x becomes that. So these are interchangeable. <laughs> Now, for B, our B, our base, uh, we want B to be greater than zero and B not equal to one. The two on the calculator bases, B equals 10 gives us the log button. And when B equals E, we get LN. Log base E is abbreviated to LN or natural log. They might say take the natural log of something rather than saying LN. First rule, I'll walk you through the creation of it. We got log B, oops, log base B of XY equals log base b of x plus log base b of y. Let's call m log b x and n log b y. Using what I have up here, this can be rewritten as b to the m equals x and b to the n equals y. So if I do x times y, I have b to the m times b to the n, which is b to the m plus n. And I can switch this back to the logarithm thing xy equals that, so we have log base b of xy equals m plus n, which we saw right here. It works all around, going back and forth. So if we start by defining those, we do x times y, we get that log b x times y.
So the properties you want to remember We have multiplication on the inside turns to addition on the outside. That's a good one. Division turns to subtraction. And I'll point out an obvious reason why in a second, but we'll need to recognize, oops, this is log base b of x, y to the negative 1. We're going to use that in a second with another rule. You have an answer. We can get an answer to our good question. Tess, Mr. Redden is dying to know what you're going to feed him today. What's for lunch? All carbs. Yes! There you go. All carbs. I told you that already. Lots of carbs. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, not all you can. <laughs> and the third one we're going to talk about is log base b of x to the n is n times log base b of x. So you can see this one, if we treat this as log base b of x plus log base b of y inverse, or not y inverse, but y to the negative 1 using that first rule, and then we bring the exponent down, we see how that division rule comes out. You can also do it with uh, switching to, just like we did up here. These rules are super important in computer science because it changes multiplication to addition, division to a subtraction, so there's something in your phone, there's something in your computer called an ALU, an arithmetic logic unit, which does addition and subtraction at the speed of light. So if you can do addition, of, if you can change anything to addition and subtraction, it can be done quicker. So these are extremely important in computers. A simple one people overlook all the time, too, like log base B of one, log base B of B, those are some good ones to list. Log base B of B. Do you know who we can rewrite this. What does this equal? If I rewrite it, let's say it's question mark. I don't know what it is. B to the question mark equals B. You know who invented the logarithm? Question mark has to equal one. His name was John. Why do I feel like I would make I said John Because Jack Napier is the, the joke. Yeah. It's the only mathematics Holy that came out Isn't that right? Jack Napier? The joker? Uh, Isn't John another name for Jack is another name for John? Now I gotta look this up. This is the only math that came out of Ireland ever. That's hateful. What? It's like extreme. You say some hateful shit about, about the Irish. That's why he invented this because um, division, you know, it's a shortcut to division and, and multiplication. Super important invention. This guy does not, this guy doesn't get enough love. We don't have computers without this invention, logarithms. Super important. But nobody knows them. <laughs> so if the base matches the argument, the log of one. There's that. Every once in a while, uh, Mr. Redden in all of his classes likes to share some Jeopardy knowledge. So like if you're sitting with your grandma watching Jeopardy, you'll get every once in a while like a math history question right. Maybe if you remember, remember, if you actually pay attention to him and don't use this as a break to check your text. I don't know what he looks like. No, don't. We're not looking him up. You can wait till we finish the rules. We're doing a long B of one. Well, if we don't know what that is, remember we can switch this. B to the question mark equals zero. We already said B is a positive number and not one. 
which means it's not zero. So we're not worried about zero to the zero. Question mark has to equal zero. So zero equals log B of one. Oh, shit. I, yeah, I read it wrong. This goes over and becomes the, the right, my bad. You're like, that never equals zero. <laughs> we make mistakes. Uh, and the note that the natural law follows all those things properties. In case, yeah, that's a, a good point. In case you're not aware, doing ln of b base b is still one. Because remember, ln is log base e. So this is just a particular base. So the natural log follows all the same rules. Wait, ln of b. We would never, ln of e. LME equals one. And LN of one equals zero. So you see, if you see LN of X, they are saying log base E of X. If you see log X, it is implied that this is log base 10 of x. Uh, there's one more one you need to know, the change of base formula. Log base b of a. I don't have it written down there. Yes, yeah, log a over log b. I was hoping it was on the list because if it's on the list here, she might have put it on the list there. It might be on the list in here. So if you have a log in a different number, your calculator can only do 10 and E. So when we get into our time machine, let's go back in time. Fuck. Knock on John's door. He's not going to be happy until he's... Why the hell did you use the word logarithm? He was thinking about log. Is he counting log? There we go. The word logarithm choice is kind of like lost in history. It's like right. algorithm, but. He said he's Irish. He's Scottish. He's Scottish. Hey, Nobody wants to come out of Scotland. Like, it's a sport. algorithm in <laughs> Irish. Yeah, yes, I like the shirt. I want one of those shirts. <laughs> <Collar. laughs> it's like the and what's another name for John? Jack. What date? Because I made up the date. I'm not sure the date was right. Jack Napier. Might have been 600. Jackson. Does not exist. That might return adult content. I cannot show this here. Go back. I think I got the, I think I got the date wrong. No one cares. No, I care. 1550. You're off by a century. Holy shit. Wow. So it's like 1600 then. He's off by a one in the hunter's place, but it's still a one. Yeah. I feel like logarithm might be algorithm in Irish. You guys didn't even know who he was. It's was like a very important person. All right, I know, I know a Jack that I can do in there. There we go. Maybe or not the A. Maybe Scotland so it's probably Maybe right. Who find a B? What pronunciation spelling? What is this? That's the real John Napier. We watch too much TV, Professor Jones. You don't have a life. Are you excited for, have you watched the new Batman Cake and Shader show? I have no, not. I have not. <laughs> I'm sure it's great. I haven't watched Teen, whatever the hell they are either. 
I don't have time to watch all the cartoons and the TV shows and everything. I do watch enough. Do you watch Fallout? I watched. Uh, we haven't finished Fallout season one, but we've been we check it, watch it here and there, like halfway through. Let's switch back to Doug. Okay, so let's look at do some, Oh, uh, so inverse properties. Some other properties that are really, really useful for logs. Yeah, I see Napier's bones. What is that? I have no idea. You can Google that on your own time. Don't put a red in. We already got one of those. Yeah. So if you have log base B of B to the X, that's just X. Right? Yeah. Uh, and that follows the large arguments we have up here, but... We also have b to the log b of x equals 1. Or x, sorry, not 1, x. And this stems, stems from the inverse property rules. Okay. b to the x and log b x are inverse functions. So if you stick one inside the other, you get an X. So let's give you some practice with them. Uh, we'll say simplify the following. Log X squared plus Log six. It's just log six x squared. Because addition on the outside turns to multiplication on the inside. Simple enough, right? Log base fifteen of twenty five plus log base 15 of 9. Log I'm showing where it comes from. I know what it is. But that is not simplified. Because 225 is 15 squared. So this just simplifies to two. Oh yeah. Nice. Ln of x plus one plus ln of x minus one. That is an excellent question. What? What is it? Why ln instead of nl? We call it natural log, not log natural. Although, if we were in any other fucking country, we would probably say log of natural. And so it would be LN. So it's not, it's not NL because we're the dumb Americans. How many other languages do the adjectives after the noun? Quite a few. We're the, we like to be our own. Metric system, fuck the metric system. We don't want to do things in powers of 10. That's too easy. Let's use 12 inch feet and miles that are 5,700 and what, 20, 60? 5,280. 5,280. I know this is for 5,000 something. You have to take time to memorize that shit. How many meters or how many kilometers or how many meters is one kilometer? A thousand. It's really quick. The metric system is so much better. We got screwed by our country in the math system. Don't the British use the metric system? No. They don't? British don't use the metric system? I thought they did. So the 
But it's just yeah. like yeah. different things in different ways. The imperial system, that's a button. That's the length of a persona king's foot. But we could have gone to metric when everybody else did. They use the metric system now, don't they? So they said yes. this was a bad idea. So don't blame British. We chose, we made a choice. They tried to change in the 70s, but my generation pushed back a lot. So it was too hard. And then they gave up. Oh, let's see this one. Yeah, but they tried. They tried to change it on us. Why not both? Why not both? Sounds like they did learn to scale more and more. Simplify that bad boy. And Mr. Redden, that joker I just showed came out when me and you were our teenagers and not big bookworms like we are now. Oh, that joker died? Yes. Looks like a joker, but I think he died a little early. I think he died in real life. The actor? Jack Nicholson died? Oh, that was Jack Nicholson? Never mind. One of the real guys. What, the one with Adam you know, West? There's another Joker movie coming out. <laughs> I, don't watch I haven't watched the Joker movie. Yeah, I haven't, but I'm going to for the next one. That's how I was. I'm sure I'll watch it, but like, it sounds like it's a mental health movie. And I don't watch superhero movies to deal with real life shit. I hadn't even watched the cool that recently. Right? Who the hell watches superhero movies for real life shit? I don't need to deal with mental health issues in a movie. Watch movies to escape fucking problems in real life. And I work with Red. Mental health is an issue every day. How does this simplify? Who's got this? Uh, a log of a cube of the BOC. So what's 40 years old? Log of a cubed what? Root B. Did anyone else get that? You may have left the law or the the exponent as b to the one half, but these are equivalent. No, I want to see. Why well, watch the Batman when the boys are out? The boys is superior. I'm so behind on like most of the common series. I don't relate to most people. I don't read comics. I only I, I'll watch like the movies when they come out and some of the TV shows. I ain't got time for them all, but like the boys are worth watching. That's like what superheroes. Well, let's not go with heroes. That's what let's go super talented people would be like if they had superpowers. Real world people. Did anyone need that longer? All right. So y'all been complaining about log equations. Let's do some. What? This is what Mr. Ren's been heckling me about. Now, the first step on any of this is we do not want a coefficient. So let's move that 2 up and make this log 3 of x squared equals log 3 of 5x minus 6. There are two approaches here. Divide both sides by one. I just saw the That is the worst possible approach. What? What did he say? He said divide both sides by log three. <laughs> So we could subtract. 
Then this turns into one log. And then we say three to the zero equals x squared over five x minus six, which equals one. And so x squared equals five x minus six if we clear fractions, right? That's a long way of going and saying this. This matches this, so this has to match this to be equal. Shortcut, as long as that you have it, no coefficients out front, we can line up the insides. We do want to note x squared needs to be greater than zero and 5x minus six needs to be greater than zero because those are domain restrictions on logs. So we would solve normally here. Remove them all to one side. Factor, factor, factor. Um, it's not minus three, minus four, Okay. I did minus six plus one. And that would give you a minus six right here. Good good catch though. If it was the other sign, always do you may have been wrong this time, but it's worth saying. Like because every once in a while the teacher will do it wrong. It happens. Even as Wow, they're bringing lunch in here. This is not, oh, the SI is in. Yeah, SI is in. Nice. It's all right, it's going to get distracted. So does this, it, this clearly means the x squared is greater than zero. Uh, let's just check 5x minus six greater than zero real quick. 5x is greater than six. X is greater than six fifths. X equals three or two does apply. This is one and one fifth. Three or two is greater than that. So those both work. What about two natural log of x? Equals natural log of 81. Yeah. But it's the point is practice the skills. Because sometimes you can't just spot it, right? If I said 80, you wouldn't be doing this. <laughs> right? So the, the cheat shortcut, I don't know if he did this here. Uh, but we could recognize that ln of 81 is ln of 9 squared, which is 2 ln of 9. And that still has to equal 2 ln of x. And the only way this is possible is if 9 equals x. But if this wasn't 81, but like 80 or some shit like that, this whole cheat shortcut doesn't work. So like in general, don't rely on that, but it can speed you up. Uh, the correct way would be moving this up as an exponent, and we can subtract the 81 over. Then this becomes division. This is e to the 0 equals x squared over 81, but e to the 0 is 1. So we have x squared equals 81. Take the square root, we get x equals plus or minus 9. But now we got to check our domain restrictions. We have natural log of x. This forces x to be greater than 0, which eliminates the negative 1. And we just get x equals 9. Does that like answer the question? 
Let's give you guys a fun one. Give you a couple minutes to do it. This is the last one we'll do before you get ready for lunch. <laughs> log base six of x plus log base six of x minus 13 equals log base six of 30. This is like the third or fourth time you've said this in the last hour. What is it? It's so much easier. Is this the way it's already or 30? 30. Did you make that up? I might have chosen a different problem than the one you created. Do you not remember us discussing this last week when you tried to put me on blast then? The worth of doing problems that are just so it's developing skills. The answer is completely irrelevant. It's the skills you learn while doing it. It's the journey, not the destination. Journey before destination. I did long with this for the first time back in eighth grade. And then you had these Olympiads and stuff that we would get. And I remember the advanced section of it would have problems on the net, and I'd just do it, and I got the gold medal because no one else knew how to do it. It wasn't in the syllabus, I just found it on YouTube, so I knew how to do it. And I just got gold medal upon gold medal. So that year was just gold. Watch YouTube instead of Batman, and you get a gold medal. Yeah. What do you do for fun? I watch YouTube. Learn stuff. You don't ever do anything for fun. It is fun. Anything else other people would consider fun? What about playing solitaire? What about playing poker? What about listening to music or reading a book? Why do you make not textbooks, not, not history books. His life is not sad. Don't make it sad. Have you read a science fiction book since you turned 18? I read the, so recently I read the whole, um, is it Asimov, the famous one? The Foundation. The Foundation. I actually haven't oh, read that one. so slow and boring. <laughs> it took forever to get through it. Was it? Slow, I haven't read that one yet. Slow turn, man. Slow turn aside. <laughs> And I, that was the last one I read. <laughs> what do you do on your drive to work? Music. I, I only live one minute away. Oh my god. Do you live literally it's one big. minute? You're that close? Why are you late every morning then? <laughs> oh, no. You live one minute walking away? It takes me that long to get to here from where I park in the handicap section. <laughs> He he's, like, he's like a flash across this motherfucker. Probably a 10 minute walk. So what do you do during the 10 minute walk? Just think about shit? You don't listen to anything? I got those, I got those earphones, but they pop out of my ears. How do you keep them in your ears? What are you going to do on your drive to Berkeley? Mr. Red, what are you going to do on your drive to Berkeley? I got satellite radio. Oh my awesome. god. But what are you going to listen to? When you drive, you don't ever have music? to change it. It stays the whole time. Please say music. What are you going to listen to? Okay. What, yeah, what music? I'm not listening to a podcast. Yeah. Like, no. I got a phenomenal audio book you might like. I don't like audiobooks. I don't listen to them. Yeah, I think you would like this one. I didn't like I audio books. It to you. I can focus more when I'm reading. I, I agree, but this guy is so phenomenal. Like, I read the book, and then someone told me to listen to the audio, and I listened to the audio, I'm like, oh my god, this is so much better. Was it like the author anymore? No. <laughs> it's a voice actor, and he, like, does the... He impersonates, like, Patrick Warburton as the main character, but he does, like, a whole bunch of voices by the end. Yeah. Yeah. You like 12. You need like voices. They represent different characters, so it's easier to track who's who. <laughs> Dungeon Crawler Carl. Great book. Better audio. Check it out on audio. Audible.com. What? 
Some, yeah, something with you and Dungeon, but everything involves Dungeon somehow. Well, I like Dungeons and Dragons, but that's not. Dungeon Crawl Carl is, I guess it does take place in a dungeon. All right, so let's do this. One more and then we eat. I'm going to shortcut that whole bullshit of dividing, moving it over, dividing, and then raising it to the tower, and then multiplying out, clearing the fractions. We're just going to say the logs matches, the arguments match. I wanted to make sure you didn't say 10 and 3. It's an easy, this is an easy one to fuck up. This is a very easy one to fuck up. Speed factoring this, a lot of people will burst out 10 and 3. Because the 30 is... 10 and 3 looks like 10 and 3, yeah. Yeah, it totally looks like 10 and 3, but the sign, if it was positive, would be 10 and 3. But the negative changes it to 15 and 2. So we get x equals 15 or x equals negative 2. But we got to go back to here. x has to be greater than 0, and x minus 13 has to be greater than 0. And the only one that satisfies that is this. This breaks here and here. So x equals 15 is the only answer. <laughs> there are other types of log problems you can do, but they're like we don't do them in calculus. Like radioactive decay. Like where does this shit show up? Uh, radioactive decay. Half-Life, not the game. Uh, investment growth. Population is a good one for logarithmic models. There's a lot of examples to this, uh, but like if they show up in calculus, you'll be doing calculus stuff with them. We don't do logs or logarithms generally in statistics. I'm sure there are, I know there are, you, you could use it, but like what we teach here yeah. is introduction to statistics. That's some hardcore shit for people we that are trying to classes. take it to avoid algebra. We just have one statistics class here. Yeah. And you get a, you get a PhD in statistics, so there's a lot of shit to take beyond this. P, real, real statistics requires calculus. All the formulas you get in statistics are shortcut modes for calculus. So if you take a calculus-based statistics, when you transfer, you'll you'll see some good shit. Most of the formulas in that class, the professor was just saying it's beyond the scope of the class, beyond. It, that's, that's, well, that's what you got to say. Most students that are taking stats here are, don't even have good algebra skills. So like trying to bust out logarithms and shit like that and heart, exponential functions, like exponential functions are the ones that show up the most. Uh, like the Poisson function and stuff like that. Uh, the normal uh, standard bell curve follows an exponential curve. Uh, we just use a computer. That's it. Pack up. You're ready for lunch. Chow down. Oh, you think? Yeah, there's people in there. They're doing SI training over.